Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. I realized that it took us 15 lessons just to get out of the first lab, but I promise that we're gonna go at a more brisk pace from this point on. Uh, we've already got the basics of XAML and we understand the basic layout of the grid app project template. Uh, and we have that under our belts already. So I think it's gonna be smooth sailing from this point on. Uh, also, we took quite a few lessons to just really understand how the data access classes worked. But now our focus will shift to Windows 8 and the Windows runtime specific topic matter and issues like layout and how to make things look good and all the various orientations and snap views, okay? So in the previous lesson, we modified the layout for the group detail page and the item detail page, but we've largely ignored up to this point the alternate layouts. Uh, we focused solely on what the app would look like in full screen landscape, but as we noted in a previous lesson, our app needs to look good in different orientations and different screen resolutions as well as different snap states. So we're gonna begin that process in lab number two. So just to be clear now, we are, let's start up here at the top. We are in lab number two, orientation, snapping, and semantic zoom. Exercise one, beginning in task number one. And task number one just asks us to execute the application starting in landscape and then rotated to portrait and just notice that out of the box because we're using a grid view and the grid view is wired up to accommodate this it already looks good so we're not going to have to make any changes for the alternate portrait view uh, however that's not the case when we get to task number two and look at the group detail page it asks us to execute the application tilted and we'll notice that there's all this extra space off here below the uh, the column that has the uh, the map and the introductory paragraph. And so our task then is to add a new list view that's to be used exclusively in the portrait view. And so we're gonna fill in that blank area with all of these individual recipes that are now off to the right-hand side and not viewable. And so that's what we're gonna do in uh, task number two and three. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and just do what it asks us to do here, and which is to open up the group detail page, find the existing list view, and then add a new list view control named portrait list view below it. So I'm gonna just do what they've asked here and copy this code. I'm gonna go to my group detail page.xaml and scroll down to the existing list view, and I'm just gonna paste in that code. All right, and so we do have now a new list view with the name portrait list view. And now it'll only be used, we wanna wire it up so that it will only be used for portrait view. To do that, we're gonna need to make some modifications to the visual state manager, visual state groups, and we're gonna specifically be targeting the uh, full screen portrait visual state. But before we do that, let's talk about the visual state manager and how it works with the layout aware page to decide which transformations to trigger on our page. So given the state of an app, uh, show this, hide that, modify this width, change the stacking orientation from vertical to horizontal and so forth, all right? So let's spend a little time nailing down the details of how this is all wired up and how it all works. I don't expect for us to ever go in and modify this plumbing, but I think it's useful for us to understand how the layout uh, aware page performs its magic. Uh, so we'll peek behind the, the curtain and just learn about how it all gets wired up and maybe that'll give us some insights to how the visual state manager actually works, all right? So if we take a look at the layout aware page and we take a look at the constructor, so as soon as a page that inherits from layout aware page is uh, instantiated, then the constructor for the layout aware page will also execute. And so in this case, there's a couple little checks going on at first, but then we see this where we're uh, wiring up an anonymous method to be executed whenever the loaded event for the page is fired. And the very first thing that it will go and do is call this startup layout updates method. And so let's go ahead and go to that definition. As the name applies, what we wanna do at the very outset, we wanna determine what is the current uh, orientation of the device and what's the current state? Is it snapped? Is it uh, filled? Whatever the case might be, because we want to get the app or the page rather 
in the app oriented correctly right off the bat. That's what this method does and it wires up for future changes in case they occur. So let's look at what goes on here. First of all, it does what we said a moment ago. Start listening to the view state changes when there are controls interested in updates. So whenever the Windows current size changes, we want to fire off this Windows size changed event in line 247. And so that is uh, declared here below in line 256. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But this is important because from now on, while this page is active, anytime there's a change to the orientation or snap state, uh, of the device and this page is loaded, then this method would be called. More about that in just a moment. So that sets us up for the future. What about right now, immediately as the page is loading? So as the page is loading, what we want to do is call this visual state manager dot go to state. So hey, visual state manager for the page, go to the current state. Well, what is the current state? Let me go, let me figure that out and get back with you, right? And so that's what this determine visual state helper method does. It actually determines the current visual state and returns that back in a string and then passes that to the visual state manager on each of our pages. And then one of these visual states will actually fire off and make changes using their storyboards and uh, all their changes defined inside of there, right? And so it's either going to be full screen landscape, filled, snapped, or full screen portrait. Okay, so again, from this point on, now we're set up. The page looks right at the initial orientation of the device, but what if the, the device changes or what if the snap state changes while we're on this page? Well, now this is where that, what we wired up here in line 247, we're listening now for any changes to the orientation or to the snap state of the device. And at that point, we're gonna call this window size change, which in turn is called this invalidate visual state. And ultimately it's doing a bunch of checks and making sure that there are controls on the page that are listening for this, for this change. Now in this case, we only have one visual state manager on our group detail page. So we would expect this to only be fired off one time, but, but, Basically, whoops, I'm in the wrong spot here. Uh, determine visual state, yeah, invalidate visual state. From this point on, uh, we wanna call the go to state for that visual ma state manager and tell it what the current visual state is, all right? So, all right, we're gonna come back to storyboards and transitions in a little bit, but one last note, the layout aware page constructor also, go back up to the top here, here's the constructor. It also sets up an anonymous function to handle the unload event. So whenever this page is unloaded, we want to um, stop listening for window size changed events. So we're gonna undo the work that we did in line 247 where we wired it up. Now we're saying stop listening. We're, uh, that's the job of the next page that gets loaded into the apps frame, okay? All right, whew, that was a lot of plumbing. Fortunately, we don't have to change that at all or very often at least, uh, but it's uh, just be aware that the, the layout aware page is performing a vital function and that is to wire up and say, hey, device, whenever you change, let me know because I gotta let my pages know that something's changed. And then it says, hey, page, you got, you got your visual states all set up? Here, whatever your visual state is for filled, go and do it. Whatever your visual state is for a full screen portrait, go and do it now. All right, and so then it runs off and it, it will perform the storyboard. All right, so let's talk about the transitions in the storyboards that since we're right here. When the window changes sizes due to snapping, orientation, or whatever, the visual state manager will pick the visual state uh, that matches the application view state that it was given uh, from that invalidate view state method or what have you, okay? So it's either gonna be full screen landscape, full screen portrait, filled or snap, like I said earlier. Uh, and so then it will kick off the storyboards that are defined within a given visual state. And a storyboard is basically defining the appearance of a control in a given state. So in this case, back button, go and change your style to the portrait back button style, okay? And so you have the series of object animations using keyframes, uh, which simply are simply changes that should be made uh, to a given object. Take this object and this property and set it to this new value. 
but it also has this added wrinkle of how long that should take so it enables this the sense of animation now in most cases these are set to zero which means kick it off instantly make it happen fast all right it shouldn't be it shouldn't be like three second animation where it morphs from one state to another okay but i guess we could play around with it and see what that does right it'd be fun just to set the key time equal to five and then watch what happens uh but i'm not going to do that in this lesson i'm not sure what to predict that what would happen okay all right so given all that background let's go ahead and jump into task number three or can let's con continue see what task number two has for us yes we need to continue to make changes uh to our uh, group detail page so let's now change the visual state who element whose name is full screen portrait and inside the visual state remove the following statements and then add these statements so let's go ahead and copy that code So we're looking for full screen portrait and we're going to remove this and instead we're going to paste that. All right. And essentially what this is doing is saying, get rid of the item grid view, which is currently being used and instead use the portrait list view, which we just pasted in at the very outset of this video. Okay. So now it says we can run it and see what the difference is. Let's tap on one of these. Ah, beautiful. All right, so again, all of the individual recipes moved down below the, uh, the large graphic. And so now we are oriented correctly for this portrait view. Very nice. All right, and so that finishes up task number two. Let's look at task number three. Customize the item detail page to kind of do the same sort of thing here. So if we were to run it, we would see the ingredients get chopped off to the right and we don't even see the directions. So instead what we should do is modify, open the item detail page and find the flip view control. And after the flip view, add another one called portrait flip view. So let's go ahead and do that. Whoops, why am I doing that? Let's just copy it. All right, so here we go. Let's get rid of that and get rid of that. Uh, item detail page. Let's use co code outlining. Get rid of some things here. Here's the first flip view. Let's paste our new flip view right beneath it. And then what we're gonna do is find the visual state whose name is full screen portrait. And then we're gonna add the following statements to the storyboard element inside of the visual state. Okay, so we can do that. And what this will do is hide the original flip view and show the new portrait oriented flip view. So let's do that. Full screen portrait. And we've pasted in a couple of new object animations using keyframes. So now that should be all we need to do. And so let's go ahead and tap an individual item. And now look how beautifully it's oriented, just as we would expect it to be. Very nice. All right. And so I'll leave it for you to go off and on your own, kind of take a look at you know, the difference in how they did the layout. It's essentially just a matter of, of the orientation, for example, of the scroll viewer and the stack panels. Uh, if you were to compare the two, uh, you can see that its data template uses a scroll viewer and grids and stack panels. They're just oriented different in this new version. And so, you know, if you're off built, trying to build your own, uh, version of this you just have to uh, flip everything 
and then start experimenting and adding and removing things and trying to get them uh, to look good. And it's just a lot of detail work that that's required. Um, you can spend hours just staring and making sure everything lines up. Uh, it's just a matter of being detail oriented and tweaking things until you get the right layout. So walking through the specific changes won't help you as you go to lay things out. What you're gonna, gonna need to do is again, just uh, change the, uh, the setting on your on your uh, simulator and then uh, see how the new uh, in this case flip view or it could be you know the overall layout of the other controls the stack panels and the grids and so forth look uh, as you change states okay all right so that's all for this lesson we'll keep moving ahead in the next lesson we'll see you there thank you Thank mm -hmm. you.